Did you know Variety, the children's charity, is the entertainment charity started by a group of show business people who found an abandoned baby in a theatre way back in 1928. These kind-hearted performers raised so much money to help the lost child that they began helping other children. And Variety, the children's charity, was born. Read the full story and support the entertainer's charity that supports kids in need today. Visit variety.org.au. You're listening to the School of Hard Knock Knocks podcast with me, Maury Morgan. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, your next comedian. <laughs> Some drink on an empty head, you know that, don't you? Uh, that is the shittiest knuckle I have ever heard in my life. Everyone in this room is now dumb for having no. listened to it. That's a bucket list. <laughs> you have dangerously underprepared yourself for the shit that is about to get real. This is not your usual School of Hard Knock Knocks podcast. This episode was recorded live at the Adelaide Podcast Festival, within the Greater Adelaide Festival, and in front of a live audience. And keeping in theme, I kept things local by bringing in my old friend and Adelaide artist, Luke Lome, as well as comedian and national treasure, Glenn Nicholas. Few know that it was at Rundle Mall, at the Balls, where Glenn's busking career morphed, first into kids' television and then onto the big gig, followed by his very own program, The Glenn Nicholas Show. With help from my mate Luke, we follow Glenn's trajectory, discuss the Adelaide Fringe, Redheads, Paddy Biscuit, creating a tribe of followers, and dressing as a woman. If you're a performer and attend festivals in Australia, then you'll enjoy this podcast with my mate Luke and Glenn Nicholas. Well, thank you very much for turning up. Now, uh, for those listening at home right now, in about a week's time, or a month's time, or a year's time, we are at the Adelaide Fringe Festival right now, and I have two gentlemen on my left. We have Luke Loam, and Luke Loam is a local resident. Give it up for... Yeah. And some of you might not recognise his face. He's been behind the booth a few times. He's a DJ, yeah. And I know this guy, strangely, from Shanghai, right? Bizarre. Anyway, Luke, g'day. How are you doing, Murray? Good. And in the middle, we have Glenn Nicholas. Give it up for Glenn. <laughs> now, if you're as old as me and you have grey hair, you probably remember Glenn. Not only did, did Glenn do the big gig, remember that big gig? Ladies, I see that. But he also had his own show called The Glenn Nicholas Show. Give it up for Glenn. <laughs> Thank you. G'day. Thank, thank you very much. Thanks for having me. <laughs> now, it's, um, this is normally the School of Hard Not Knocks podcast. We interview comedians like Lynn. And w- in fact, this is our second time together. Yeah. Well, second time. I was in my walk-in wardrobe the first time. I wasn't. But... Yeah, no, you were not. He didn't see me peer, no. peering through. But uh, no, I was in my walk-in wardrobe where I do the interviews because it's, got a, it's like a sound booth for, for my, my side. And then I called you. Oh, yes, you did. I, I called you. We had a great conversation about Glenn's life, how he grew up in the UK, uh, moved to Wales, um, and, then, and then, as a young man in his t- teens or 20s, then came to Australia. Correct. So yes. if you don't know that story, I'm not going to repeat it. You've got to go back to the School of Hard Not Knocks podcast, one of the episodes, and listen to that episode. Yes, it's yeah. a wonderful tale. Yeah, it is. It is. Because then shortly afterwards, you became a celebrity across Australia with your own TV show on ABC, and the rest is history. Yes. But it uh, all started. It, well, well, yeah, it started with, with a, the big gig was the thing. With the, oh, well, well, before that, yes, it started in Adelaide, busking in the mall. It bus, busking in Rundle Mall. Did you know that? Yeah. So if you know Glenn Nicholas from the big gig and the Glenn Nicholas show, it all started with yeah, your here. song. I was actually busking here, and then while I was doing a show in the Rundle Mall near the balls... Near the balls. <laughs> uh, someone came out to me and said, um, you should go to Channel 9 and I, to audition for this show. I didn't know what it was, but that was Here's Humphrey. And I thought it was just auditioning to sing a song. So I sang the song and said, would you like to do this gig on television? Yes. So that was the start of my sort of TV career. I might add I was awful. <laughs> I was so nervous and shy. But the, working with the bear was kind of my, I guess, my grounding in television work. Yep. And then uh, I did a f- quite a few shows in Adelaide. Everything was based in Adelaide. And then in 88, I did the, or 87 it was, we did the very first cabaret festival with, uh, and I was supporting the Doug Anthony All-Stars. Wow. And Mark, a, guy, a comedian called Mark Neal, who's a fantastic comedian, uh, um, he was the host. And we did it at the Adelaide Festival. It went nuts. And then after that, I got asked to do the big gig. 
uh, uh, with the Doug Anthony. So, so someone must have seen me in Adelaide yep. performing and asked me to do that there show. You go. And that show changed everybody who was on that show, changed our whole world. There you go. Yeah. Amazing. Adelaide. But all out of Adelaide. Love Adelaide. Perfect. Yeah. Well, um, Luke, you were born in Adelaide. I was. You were. This and, is true. And already, I've just sat down with you to do some sound checks, and already people are coming up to you going, ah, oh, Luke, how are you doing? Because you've been overseas for the last 10 years, I've right? actually, yeah, I have been. I've been gone for 10 years. Um, I grew up in Adelaide, and Port Lincoln, actually, but yeah. uh, disappeared oh. to... Yeah, there, there we go. You shout out for Port Lincoln. <laughs> uh, disappeared to China, yes. where I met you. You did? Um, some of you probably don't know this. Most of, in fact, all of you won't know this, but Maury uh, has a, an alter ego, and he was a... Uh, the owner of a very big company, a, a national training company, the mm. largest one in China. Uh, and I remember meeting you for the first time. It was a six in the morning. You picked me up. <laughs> actually, I arrived from the airport, banged on your door, woke you up. And you're wearing what I thought was a dress, but it was a dressing gown. It was a very pretty one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And, uh, yes. Whereas, well, we'll get on to dresses because that's something we all have in common, actually, the three right. of us okay. in that sense. Well, um, and now, Luke, uh, just talking about that, being a local and having gone to many fringe festivals, what makes for a good fringe festival show? Look, I think you could take something from so many different shows. I think the, the thing about fr the fringe that really appeals to me is that you get such a diverse variety of, uh, of options. Uh, you know, there is so much to, to see, so much to do, uh, and, and the, the surrounds as well. Yeah, that's a politically correct answer, but what's really good? What, what do you go to see? Something funny, something entertaining, mm. something, I mean, I saw one of the most memorable, memorable gigs for me would have been uh, Tim Minchin uh, yes. performing here in um, uh, just across at the Garden of Unearthly Delights. Mm -hmm. Uh, before he went on to write the, the big Broadway musicals. And, I mean, he's obviously an amazing talent. And just seeing talent of that calibre uh, is fantastic I thought you were in say, such intimate environments I thought you were going to well. say talent of that colour. Of being that colour, being, right, being a fellow ginger. Yeah, ginger. Absolutely. <laughs> we, we gingers need to unite. Oh, yeah. Stick together. Stick together. Well, well, that's, yeah, a couple of no, other, gingers. Other, the... other gingers. I think we're a dying breed from what I hear, in Australia in particular. I think where our, our recessive gene is being weeded out by the sun, the harsh yes. <laughs> ozone depleted sun. <laughs> and very, well, we've got a ginger over there saying, screaming it out. Good. Um, Glenn, you don't have a, a ginger beard, do you? You've got a bit well, of red. No, I, uh, well, my, my father's a redhead. Oh. And my mother wanted me to be one, but I wasn't. So you went grey. So like I have, good there is redhead in my family. There is. Yeah. Fantastic. Well, actually, we'll, we'll keep with you, Glenn, because we've only got 15 minutes on this show, which yeah. normally we go to for, for 20 to 25. Um, now, talking about the fringe and talking about uh, the challenge of standing out from a crowd, like, you know, gingers do, uh, how do you break through the noise? Because you're going to New York, you're going to have a show in Off-Broadway called Certified Male, which is yeah. based on the Australian... Yes, version. version of the show, yeah. What does someone who's listening to this podcast right now, maybe not in Adelaide, they might be in another state of Australia, how do they break through the noise in their comedy Look, particularly? I, I think we live in what I would call the connection economy now. People need to feel connected to. Mm -hmm. Social media is definitely a part of that. It's not the only thing, but for anyone who's listening who's thinking about getting sort of cut through... Uh, in the media who's, who's doing the show, you, you must be connected with your audience. And yep. people need to know like they've seen and, f and, uh, and recognised. So um, my advice would be to, a long way out, sort of build your marketing, your branding campaign. So mm -hmm. it's about building a brand. When we did... Uh, we went to Edinburgh in 2007. Yep. Which was, um, which is still the largest arts festival in the world. Yes, I believe this is the second. Second, yeah. yes. So there's, there's 1,200 shows this year in Adelaide, and Adelaide's a fantastic. It's growing, but in Edinburgh, it kind of was like last year there was 3,500 shows. Wow, and you can imagine how many performances that is. But the, the way that we got some cut through was we started with the marketing quite a long way before. This was before the social media stuff, but. Um, you still can't... I mean, you can do your, 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 your branding well before. So you, you need to come up with material that people want to share. So mm. they, they know you, they like you, and they want to share you with their friends. Yep, yep. 
So the actual, the, the, the branding is in a way as important as the material that you do. Yeah. And some people say, don't put your best material out online. But I say actually do, because that, that way people, you do get some cut through because people want to share. And if you get something that can go viral, then brilliant. Um, so it's about creating your followers, creating your tribe, and uh, well before you even think about bringing the show out. That's my advice to anyone who's sort of yeah. thinking about doing it. So, Luke, that. you've been in marketing for a very long time, and I, social media marketing as well. Yes, correct. Anything to add to Glenn? Look, I think, I think you're spot on in terms of the viral nature of trying to get yourself out there. People are going to some extreme lengths to, uh, to do some brazen activities to be noticed. Mm. Um, some are good, some are not so good, but it's interesting to see what captures people's attention. And, and do you find that there are some things that you need to do in, in, in your efforts to reach out to people that are what, what, probably well, out, a little out of the, outside of the box? Well, I think w what we're trying to do with one of my shows is to create a world which is uh, it sort of in a parallel universe to the show itself, yep. so that people can actually have an experience of the creators, which is myself and the songwriters. This is the musical I'm talking about. Yep. Um, myself and the songwriters and, and the cast, so that they get a sense of what the show will be like in terms of the people behind it. Yep. People really want to know, you know, about who is, creates the show. What are they like? Am I going to like this person? And therefore, will I like their product? And if they like this product, then they're likely to like the next one that you do. So as much as, because I'm an extreme introvert, but you know, what, what I have to understand is that people want to know about you know, me and my life. And mm. I think, well, oh, I couldn't think of anything worse. But actually, that's what people want. Yep. I find that incredibly ironic. And I hear this often that these people say, I'm an extreme introvert, and they're saying it on stage in front of all of these people. <laughs> yeah. Yet, you know, when you come off the stage and... Well, we perform out of our opposite, though. Right. So that's what I'm doing now. I'm sort of interacting out of my opposite. But a lot of comedians, yep. as you would know, and you would know, a lot of people who are performers are introverts yeah. by nature, you know. Well, talking about introversion, <laughs> extroversion, <laughs> let's talk about dressing up as women. Yes, let's do that. Uh, because that's three things we have in common, we apparently. Do. You thought I looked like I was dressed in a dress. Correct. Yes, it now, was a very pretty Glenn Nicholas, girl. you might remember Pate Biscuit from The Big Gig and many other things afterwards, yeah. yeah. Thank you, thank you. She's very attractive. She she, she's in a box with Bongo. <laughs> but but <laughs> exclusive only now at the Adelaide Pos Podcast Festival. She might be coming back. 2019. Well, yeah. The, um, I've been talking with Wendy Harmer and with Jean Kitson, and it looks like uh, 2019 will be the 30th anniversary of the big gig going to air. We went to air in 1989. So we're, we're talking about doing a stage show. Yep. Doing a stage show next year around Australia. Perfect. And, and the Mars Bar apparently is the best place to do it at, because you've dressed as a woman... Not at the Mars Bar. Uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> I guess uh, a friend of mine had a very, what he thought was a clever idea for his 21st birthday, and it was a fancy dress, and on the invitation, it actually said who you had to come as. He nominated the characters for each person. Given that he was my best friend and I was giving the speech, I had to come as Priscilla, Queen of the Desert. So Beautiful. I was wearing a full-length, rainbow-fitted, sequined outfit, long blonde hair, feather boa. I couldn't find any high heels to fit me because I've got size 13 feet, so I had these steel cap caterpillar boots, which was a bit of an odd look. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and you're the six, rest foot of the four. The six foot four, six foot five, what, six thought? four and a half. Six yeah. four and a half, and uh, the middle. would have been stunning on that night. I was actually no, I was pretty hideous. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not a good-looking woman, I will say that. Well, gentlemen, uh, I think we've done a full loop there. I think we've gone from... Uh, so, Luke Loam from Adelaide, uh, dressed as a woman. Now we, we can picture that. I'm glad that that's the one thing that you're going to take away from this. So, that's, <laughs> that's great. I hope to see that again. And Glenn Nicholas, who's famous for dressing as a woman as a pate biscuit. And My if you haven't seen moment. that... Thank you. Check it out on YouTube. Fantastic. Thank you very much, Adelaide, for having us. The School of Hard Not Knocks. Yay. This has been wonderful. And by the way, for our live audience... If you're interested in learning stand-up comedy tomorrow, Glenn and myself and Luke, you're going to come along too, I believe. I'll be there. Uh, we'll be teaching stand-up comedy at The Archer, which is down the road or up the road. Not sure which way we go, but it's in North Adelaide. North Adelaide. This North way. Adelaide. So it's from 7.30 p.m. until 9.30 p.m. tomorrow. You're all welcome. It is free. See you there.